In the second installment of our screencast series about designing an iOS app in Sketch, we are going to create a toolbar. We start again by inserting a rectangle, making it the proper height, and then moving it down to the bottom of the artboard. After disabling the border, we change the gradient to a darker tone. We then add a thick inner shadow to the top of the navigation bar to simulate the border, going for white and semi-transparent. And then we will do the same thing again for a second smaller, which we will make black. The next thing we need is a shadow above the navigation bar. We are going to do this using another rectangle, instead of putting the shadow directly on the navigation bar, because we only want a shadow at the top. And notice that to insert this rectangle, I pressed the R key on the keyboard, which is a convenient shortcut for inserting a rectangle. I'm going to group these layers, rename the group, and then lock the layer in place to prevent any accidental edits. Next up is the first icon on the tab bar. We have already created a copy of that one, so I will move it into view first. Now let's try to recreate it. You may think it looks like a fairly complex shape, but it is very simple to make using Boolean operations. We will start with the background rectangle. Just putting this shape into place. Then we will disable the border and give it a corner radius of 4 pixels. Now I hold down the option key and drag to create a duplicate of the layer directly. Just resize this one a bit and turn its fill color to white so that when I drag this layer on top of the other one I can see we have to reduce the border radius to 2 pixels to make it look good and then again use option drag to create a second copy. Again we make it a bit smaller. And move it into place. Again we make a duplicate, we make it wider and we will turn the fill color to grey using the screen color picker shortcuts from the edit menu. And notice how Sketch helps us put these uh, three bars into place. Well, that is basically the shape we were going after. Now we only have to make the white parts transparent. So I'll select these two layers. And then select the background layer as well. And then I will click the subtract button from the toolbar. Note how we end up with a new shape in the layer list with three subpaths. The bottom one and the two which we subtracted. The other three are still separate layers, so let's select them and drop them on the shape as well. Note how the shape is composited starting at the bottom rectangle, then we subtract the first two and then adding the last three using a union option. It's now just one shape and we can change the color of the entire thing like this. But instead, notice how this shape is once again built using gradients, shadows and inner shadow. So instead let's copy the style from the existing layer and paste it on this one instead. 
We can now delete the original layer. We already prepared the other icons beforehand, so we will just move them into view now. You can see how these other icons could be constructed in very much the same way. And that concludes our screencast for now. Last of all, let's zoom out to see the full result of our work.